Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and today we finally start our very first sandbox series in Jurassic World Evolution 2, which means we have all the dinosaurs and all the buildings unlocked to be able to use in this sandbox series. Big thank you to Frontier Developments for providing me with an early access key for the base game and the little looks edition of the game. So just like in Jurassic World Evolution 1, you do have to play the game to unlock all the dinosaurs, do your research and unlock new buildings. So you will need to play challenge mode or chaos theory to unlock all these things and all the animals and dinosaurs. So you do not have to play campaign mode in order to unlock everything. Just so you know, if you are going to play this game and you just want to unlock everything as quick as possible, do not waste your time on playing the campaign mode. Only to, to learn the game, obviously, uh, but to unlock everything, you can just play challenge mode and chaos theory. So today we are going to make a start of our very first sandbox dinosaur park and we are going to kick off with some aviary so with flying animals and in this episode we will be adding the Tabajara, Dimorphodon, Cyrodactylus and the Maradactylus. Now I really do apologize if I ruined any of these name pronunciations. I'm Dutch and in the Netherlands <laughs> we say dinosaur names completely different from how it sounds in English and in general I just find dinosaur names just very hard. I'm going to do my best along the way with this series, but yeah, I might be ruining some dinosaur name pronunciations every now and then. I'm pretty sure I will be doing that probably in every end of episode. So please do not be too hard on me, okay? Now we start off with laying down some paths so we can later add some food and drink and, and gift shops and also some other entertainment buildings. Now let's just call this a main street area. I think this definitely has something of a main street area and, and the guests will have this beautiful viewing when they enter this park and just... Uh, yeah, enter our dinosaur park to, to enjoy and relax and be entertained. Now, I do have to say, I have the feeling that the path to in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a little bit more wonky in comparison to the path to in the first edition. I don't know. I, I just felt like I'm struggling a little bit more to get it right. But it could just be me, I guess. I'm not really sure. But yeah, you can definitely see me struggle sometimes with the path tool during this video. Other than what we did with the first game, I really wanted to do a bit more during an episode and also just feel like sometimes you just don't want to see me struggling or placing down some fences or some paths, like to struggle with the paths, etc. Like, I feel like this is going to be better to just have the speed build series. So we're going to start with a speed build and then at the end of this video, we're going to do a tour of everything that we have built. So that is the plan for this series other than we did with Jurassic World Evolution 1, which was like a lot of slow mode building and stuff. So that is not what we're going to do with Jurassic World Evolution 2. So I do really hope that you will all enjoy, obviously. Now for everyone that wants to watch the campaign or challenge mode or chaos theory, like all the let's plays and gameplay, I highly recommend you to watch people like Best in Slot, Evolution Square or Swerve. I hope I say that right. <laughs> These three I know and they are just amazing people, real Jurassic World Evolution fans. Uh, both played one and now going to play two. Definitely worth it to check out. And I will obviously link them all in the description down below of this video. But we on this channel will only be focusing on sandbox mode. Since this is something I just really enjoy playing the most. So hopefully you guys will all enjoy this as well. Please do make sure to subscribe, of course, to the channel. If you'd like to see more Jurassic World Evolution 2 sandbox mode on the channel. And I will definitely have you covered next to Planet Zoo that we play a lot on the channel. And soon we will also be playing a lot of Prehistoric Kingdom, which is basically a combination-ish of Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution. So that is probably something a lot of you will also enjoy. So 
do stay tuned for that. That beta will launch in December of this year. So I'm very excited for that as well. So stay tuned for that, of course. So what is nice with Jurassic World Evolution 2 is that you now can customize all the shops and all the other buildings that you are placing down for your guests. So it's really nice that all the shops will look different now in a way. So you can really customize every small little thing like the front and the colors. And if you want to have like seating areas or maybe just some steel beams or anything like that, you can really change the look of every building. I do really like that they added that in Jurassic World Evolution 2. And you can even go as far of like just recolor it to any color that you want. So I do really love that as well. And it's also really nice that there are some like decorations separately. So you can put that down on your path or maybe in the grass for a little bit. Even though I was hoping to get a bit more decoration. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Like it's only some planters and some some light posts and some flags. And I, I think that is basically it. Maybe some signs, but... I really was hoping to have a little bit more decorations, unfortunately, but nope. <laughs> we have to live with the few things that we have in the game at this point. And who knows, maybe maybe with some DLCs we will get some more items as well. That will be really nice. And same goes for the trees and the bushes. Like, I really love the bush tool that we have in the game and the different variations, but I really would have loved to see a tool that you just can put down one tree or one bush and having a little bit less hitbox as well so you can really just choose where you want them to be but yeah well it wasn't in Jurassic World Evolution 1 so yeah okay it's also not in Jurassic World Evolution 2 but it would be just super amazing if we would have that option in the future someday that they can maybe change that or something I don't think they will but you never know you can always hope and wish for it I guess so in this episode, we are adding some aviaries. Now, decorating the aviaries was a little bit of a struggle uh, because of the, the, the brush and like the hitboxes. Like you can't really control where you want your bushes and your trees to be. So this was either too many or too few. So yeah, it was sometimes a little bit frustrating. And as well as like the water tool, like these apiaries are not really that big. So uh, there is not really that much freedom uh, to uh, to create some water, but you do need water for these flying animals. So that is definitely a thing. So yeah, you really have to pay attention to that and uh, just play around with that. It would be nice to have a little bit of a smaller uh, brush, uh, in my opinion, for, for these things as well. And also, like, the hitbox for that water feeder, the fish feeder, is also a little bit big. So yeah, I had some struggles with, like, making these small aviaries, but in the end, I'm quite happy with how they are looking, and we're still trying to uh, figure everything out, of course, so... Uh, but yeah, for these first aviaries, I'm definitely really happy with how they are looking. Now, for anyone that is new on the channel, I do warn you, like, these animals and dinosaurs do have certain requirements of the size of their habitat, etc. Uh, but I'm not going to pay attention to that. I play sandbox mode, so I just want to play creatively and I'm not really going to pay too much attention to these kind of things. Uh, they will get like the things that they really, really need. Other than that, I, I tried at least to turn off everything like dying uh, animals and those kind of things. So yeah, I am just going to play how I want it to be with like creatively and just have a fun like that. So just so you know, I will not be paying attention to that throughout our sandbox series. Now, obviously we're starting with Isla Nublar, but we're definitely also going to play uh, other sandbox maps as well. But I just wanted to start with this one. And since we're doing speed build series and we're going to add several dinosaurs and animals per episode, I think this map will be filled in a few episodes. And then we're just going to start another sandbox series. So yeah, we're definitely going to uh, play around with the different biomes and the different maps that we are getting with Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm very excited for that. Definitely the, the map in Canada looks just absolutely amazing. It's so gorgeous. So I really cannot wait to also start building there and to start a new sandbox series. 
Now, without further talking, we are here at the end of this speed build. So we're definitely just going to jump into the file and let me just show you guys around. So here we are at Isla Nubler, the first uh, part of what we build. And I tried to get a little bit more uh, symmetry in here. I don't think that we will uh, do that for the rest. I think we are gonna, gonna just have some really nice areas right over here, but not really symmetrical or anything like that. Uh, so, okay, this is the main street area. And as I said, like you can now just uh, decorate all of these shops yourself. Let me just show one right over here. No, let's just go <laughs> right over here in some more daylight. Uh, so we have an authentic sushi shop right over here. And, and then you can just um, decorate this however you want to. So I, I do really like the red colors right over here. So I actually did not really change anything here. But you can just change all the colors to your likings here. Uh, yeah, as much as you want to, I guess. Uh, so we have some gift shops, we have a food and drink shop, and we have some entertain ent entertainment. <laughs> we have a mini golf and we have a bowling alley. Like you do have tons of these attractions, um, gas attraction right over here. You have tons of these, a cinema, lab tour, gym, spa. So you can go really crazy, but honestly, it's like not that big so um yeah if you want to focus more on like your main street and stuff you can definitely do that you can definitely have a lot of variations in there uh but yeah we're not going to we we do have two things and i think that is enough for now i'm not saying that we're not going to add anything in the future gosh these people are so loud uh so yeah we have four <laughs> four aviaries why because we can because we can, I'm definitely excited to also uh, start working on these, um, how you call these, uh, lagoons. Uh, so yeah, that is definitely something we're gonna maybe start with in the next episode. Yeah, I think that is definitely going to be fun. Uh, obviously, we have um, a lot of different flying animals. Uh, in this case, we have the Tapejara right over here. Um, can we? Yes, we can follow you. I did not record the decorating inside of it because it's pretty hard to do that. Uh, I think with having a speed build, I think it's <laughs> it's a little bit harder. Uh, wait, yeah, we can hide this. We can hide with R. Uh, but yeah, I did try to add a few different color variations and different patterns in here. I'm not really sure if we are allowed to see one. Oh man, it's so cool to have flying animals. I really can only hope that we will get this as well in Planet Zoo. That will be just super duper amazing. I really would love that. This looks really cool, by the way. I really, I really love the flying animations. It looks beautiful. That is really cool. So yeah, okay, decoration. Um, it's quite hard to fill this all with a small aviary. So you you definitely have um, a, a, a minimum requirement here as well for this fish feeder. So um, yeah, definitely do pay attention to that. Wait, is that a drone? It is. Is that from the, um, from the rangers? To keep an eye on them or something? Can I click that? Aviary viewing gallery. Wait, no, that is not that. You can also check the um, the viewing gallery from over here, by the way. You can do the same with the um, on the water viewings, which is actually really cool. You can uh, you can go down to uh, to really see the animals uh, from down there. So that is really cool. We're definitely going to cover that in the next episode. So what do we have right over here? Can I see one? There we go. I think this is the Dimorphodon. Yes. Look at them all sitting down here. Again, I tried to add different color variations, different patterns, but there are so many. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna play around with that along with the series, but they look absolutely amazing as well. 
This is really, really cool. I got so many. I have no idea what the minimum requirements is. But I was just like, no, I'm just going to add a lot of them in here. Uh, but this is definitely a smaller apiary. So yeah, just adding water in here is quite hard again. So uh, we really have to pay attention to that. But I think it looks cool still. I think it really looks cool like this. So in the next aviary, we have... Tu, 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 tu. What do we have here? Oh, 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 where can I click you? It's really cool that they're all just sitting on these viewing galleries, by the way. I think this is the... Wait, what was it? The Ceredactylus? Again, different color variations, different patterns. It's hard to zoom in on you. Can I can I get closer to you? Like so. Ooh, there is I don't know what that is, but it's quite hard to uh to zoom in on this guy. It's because of the uh, the viewing gallery it wants me to uh, to go up. Oh, maybe we should just follow this flying one. There we go. Hello, pretty. It's really, really cool to have so many different animals. Different to choose from. Let me just quickly show. You have a hatchery bay right over here. I'm not going to try and say these names. This is my favorite. -na 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 <laughs> I know these guys from Ark really do love, uh, love to play with Ark every once in a while. If you do, Want to see me play Ark? You can uh, follow me as well on my The Lady Gamer channel. I'm not playing at this point, but we're definitely going to uh, start playing it again with Lost Island, the new uh, DLC that will launch between now and a few weeks. So I'm very excited for that. Uh, but yeah, you definitely have um, a few flying animals to choose from, which is really cool. And here we have the Marodactylus. Uh, this one I try to uh, uh, make it a little bit less dense. Not per se for the animal, but just to, to see how that would look. And actually, maybe this even looks a lot better than the ones that are really dense. Jeez, look at these guys. Oh my god, the sounds they make. That's insane. Oh my freaking gosh. <laughs> I did not see that coming. That is really a lot of noise. <laughs> but yeah, this definitely. Uh, I, I think I think we should just reduce the amount. Like the, like the. I like my density. I like everything to be dense. I do like this as well. Like this is more plain, and that is a little bit more dense. Um, but especially in these smaller ones, it just doesn't work super well especially with all the plants in the water but it looks amazing doesn't it i really do uh i do love the graphics of this game as well why do we see that little thingy not really sure it doesn't really matter anyways do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this first sandbox series episode with jurassic world evolution 2 are you getting the game or are you not do let me know in the comments as well leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe of course if you haven't already and yeah i just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one bye guys